everybody. Another snowy day and another heavy load. We're headed back to the yard with this. It took me a little bit of time to get the weight adjusted on here. I had to slide my fifth wheel forward. I had to uh, move 2,000 pounds off my drives onto my steers. I'm sitting at 78,880 pounds gross. Not much room to play around with. The maximum here is 80,000 pounds in the US. It's gotta be just right. Uh, so let's get going. We're in Duluth, Minnesota, headed back to Manitoba. Like usual, it took longer than I wanted it to. I mean, what more did I expect, right? loaded up now, we're tied down, our weights are legal, I can have 12,000 pounds on my front axle, my steers, 34,000 on my drive behind my truck, and 34,000 on my trailer, and it's pretty much just exactly bang on on all of them. I was at almost 36,000 on my drives and only 10,000 on my steers, so I had to move my fifth wheel quite a bit forward, but not too far forward because I don't want the trailer to hit my headache rack. So the first time I moved it, it was too far forward. It had to be, when I checked it out, it would have hit the headache rack, so I had to move it back a few inches. And now it's as far forward as I could have it without it hitting something. And that just moved just enough weight, 2,000 pounds. I didn't know I could move that much weight with my fifth wheel. I've always had my fifth wheel a little further back. I like the extra space to work there between my truck and trailer when I'm you know, grabbing straps and equipment out of my headache rack. One kilometer, take the entrance to the ride on I 35 North. But I've always had, you know, trouble getting weight onto my steers, and the only way to do that is to slide that fifth wheel forward. It does stabilize the steering a little bit on the ice, having more weight on your steers. Alright, we made it work. I'm glad we can make it work because it kind of. I kind of saw that 36,000 pounds on my drives and my eyes almost popped out of my head. Whoa! And I look at my steers so and I was like, oh my. We've got to figure out a way of shuffling that over, right? Trucking isn't all just about driving. It's all about a lot of math and adjusting your weight, making sure each axle has the right amount of weight on it. You don't want any overweight tickets. 500 meters, take the entrance to the ride on I-35 North.
second. They had to block off the entire road so he could back in here. That's a pretty good looking KW. <laughs> step deck. I'm hoping there's going to be an empty one in the yard that I can just grab so I can get a head start and get there tonight yet. i got to swing past home. I forgot my reflective vest that goes over my sweater. I just got my jacket, right? Uh, hopefully I can just grab an empty one and go and they can unload this trailer tomorrow whenever they want. So I'm hoping that there's an empty step deck for me at work so that I can take that. Otherwise I'll have to wait till tomorrow morning to get this trailer unloaded. Some of you have been asking why I fuel in Canada instead of in the U.S. It all depends on the season. During this season, in the winter months, when it's colder outside, I only fuel up in Canada because the fuel is made a little bit better for this climate. It's clear diesel fuel, whereas in the U.S. there's a mixture of biodiesel. Even diesel number one in the U.S. isn't quite the same as the fuel we have here. Canada that's conditioned for the cold temperatures that we have to live in. So during these winter months I just fuel up on the Canadian side of the border and in the summer months I save some money and fuel in the U.S. as much as I can. So we're just pulling into Flying J in St. Agath, Manitoba. on this trip. I've got about a quarter tank left. G 
diesel fuel here is going for two dollars and eighteen cents per liter Canadian. So yes, everybody who's been saying that the fuel's cheaper in the U.S., why not fuel there? Well, you're right, it is cheaper there. It is. But, uh, the way they mix their fuel is, it's just a little different. It, uh, it'll gel up a little easier than if you just fuel up up here. I don't even know if I need this jacket. I don't know how cold it is outside. I don't think I'll need it. So we fueled up here before leaving on this last trip. We delivered that load of lumber into Brainerd, Minnesota, ran over to Duluth, picked up there this morning, and now we're back here. Probably a total of close to 1,300 kilometers or uh, you know, 750 miles or so. Let's see what the pump has to tell us. I never like what the pump has to tell us. It's always got bad numbers, bad numbers. All right, and the numbers are in. So we drove on this last tank of tank of fuel since we fueled up last, we drove 1,395 kilometers or 866 miles. I just filled up for 560 liters or 148 gallons US. That equaled out to 40.14 liters per 100 kilometers or 5.86 miles per US gallon. Like I said earlier, the fuel price here is $2.18 per liter Canadian. Cost me $1,220.25 Canadian. What is $1,220 Canadian dollars in US dollars? $1,220 Canadian dollars equals 919 United States dollars and 8 cents. And there you have it. So in Canadian money here, I spent 87 cents per kilometer on fuel and $1.41 per mile. That doesn't include all the maintenance, my own wage, and everything else on top of that. Uh, that's just fuel. So there you go. 5.86 miles per gallon, so we are under our target, which is bad. You want to be over. Uh, I, my target is 6 miles per gallon or higher. 5.86 isn't the best. Not too far underneath, but... I'll put that in our little record keeper there. Okay. So now, like I was saying... I want to go see if they have an empty step deck trailer for me. Tomorrow in Kenora, I have a reload of lumber going down to Minnesota again, and I need a step deck for it. And I don't really want to take this step deck because this stuff's got freight on it. If I use this step deck, which I might have to if there's no other empty one, I have to wait till morning to get it unloaded in our yard, and then I can take it. Which means I'd be, uh, I'd just be getting going later in the day, and I'd rather you know, start my day over there already. But. Definitely not gonna get any closer if we sit around here much longer. Let's go. Well, we got lucky. There was a, a couple of step decks to choose from. Uh, we had one over there. You can sort of see it in the dark. One Way over there, that's 107 DB. This one over here, I think was, what was it, 131 or 130 or something? 129. This was the trailer we had, and this is the trailer I'm taking. 128 D. Look at the difference in these trailers. First of all, let's go take a look at this trailer. I took all my equipment off of it because they're gonna unload it here tomorrow. Look at this. This trailer came with me through four or five, five snowstorms, I think. 
Like, and there's nothing I can do about that. They'll have to take it inside the shop if they want to thaw it out. Get all this ice off of here, because this is all ice, eh? I mean, I could spend six hours here chipping it all off. But it'd be much quicker just to park it inside. And I can't take it to my shop, it won't fit in there. That's just from the road. Crazy, right? Now look at the difference on the one I'm taking with me to Kenora. Hopefully it stays this clean. Like, look at this guy here. That's how it's supposed to look. <laughs> Much better, right? Just covered in ice. There's probably about 1,500 pounds of ice on this trailer. This here. As opposed to this here. Much better, right? Uh, just double check all these tires. I've already checked them, but just for peace of mind. Since I'm back here, I don't like to be back by the axles and not at least kick the tires, make sure that they haven't gone flat for some odd reason uh, before I roll out. I have steel toes, so with regular shoes, that doesn't really work to kick the tires, but I always have steel toes on. Give them a good kick just to make sure they're inflated. If they're flat or if one of them's flat, you can definitely tell. Definitely. All right, old blue, I'm gonna swing by home real quick. I gotta pick up my my vest that I left at home. Maybe have some supper with the wife. And oh, this is something that I'm gonna have to fix on the weekend. The signal still works, so it still flashes, it's still signal. Fantastic, eh? It's just uh, the snow and ice probably got to it and it's probably just a bad connection. And it's all iced up right now, so I'm gonna have to get it into the shop, warm it up, melt it all out. And deal with it then. At least I got these marker lights here, right? These here. Those there. So, that's that. Always something to do, as Leroy and Leroy always say, right? There's always something to do.